Hello, my name is Darren Sakala. I worked with Tyler Skeen on this project for EC574, uh, Advanced Software Techniques and Engineering. Um, so today I'm going to be demonstrating my project and the general overview of how it works and where each requirement is traced to. So for a general overview of our project, what we did was we designed a smart home system to monitor the temperature inside and outside of the house, as well as monitoring the water level of the soil and tracking current forecast information for a given location. So for the general overview of the hardware portion of our system, we have a Raspberry Pi that's connected to two different temperature sensors. These are the DHT11 temperature sensors here and here on the breadboard. And we also have a water sensor, which is a VMA303 sensor made by Velleman. Uh, the VMA303 sensor directly connects to an analog to digital converter, which is an MCP3008. And that connects to the Raspberry Pi over SPI. The two um, temperature sensors connect just over standard GPIO or UART. Um, everything here is powered by a max of 5 volts and resistances are handled accordingly. Uh, each board or each breakout board of each chip has short protection and other sorts of resistances on there. Um, so for the focus of our project, what we really wanted to do was the, to f implement the V model on a very small scale project and see what the results were. Um, we essentially had a modular design of three core modules, the first being the temperature controller and the second being the water controller and the third being the GUI of the system. So I'm going to give you a basic demonstration starting now. And so what I'm going to do is run main.py of our script. As a starter as well, everything was written in Python. Um, so what it's doing now is it's initializing all the modules and here we have our GUI. So what this is demonstrating is it's demonstrating the forecast for the next 12 hours here, as well as the current weather information here. And we also have the forecast for the next five days. So you can see that tomorrow it's going to be 32 degrees and cloudy, whereas at 3 a.m. tonight it's going to be a clear night, but it's also going to be 21 degrees. Uh, there's pretty much no chance of rain for the rest of the week as well. Tomorrow there's about 30%. Um, so you can see here, these are all of our system states as well. So the outdoor temperature sensor is currently not being interfered with at all based on our heat source or our cold source. So it's measuring about 68 degrees. This is fairly accurate with the temperature of the room that I'm in right now. Um, humidity is a little high, but we are in a basement, so it is going to be more humid. Um, then the, uh, the indoor temperature is a little bit lower because it's not in direct contact with our heat source, therefore it's about 64. Um, you can see our recommended temperature based on our algorithm is do nothing at 68 degrees. And so this is basically setting back the outdoor temperature as what you should set the uh, thermostat to. Our moisture level here, so we have a dry cup of dirt that it's currently inserted into and you can see it's reading 0.0%. We say that the water level needs water and that we should also turn the sprinkler on in this scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the water sensor out first and insert it into our wet dirt, which is basically mud. And then after a few seconds of reading, it should be able to generate on the GUI that we have a new uh, reading. And so you can see in this very wet dirt, we have a moisture level of about 40%. And based on research that we've done online, we were able to determine that an acceptable range for normal dirt in Michigan is about roughly 15% water capacity. Anything above that is oversaturated and therefore you shouldn't water the system. Therefore, we say the water level stays okay and that the sprinkler's off. So now for a little demonstration of our temperature system. So we have our outdoor sensor here, and for now I'm going to move it into the path of our heat lamp here. And so you see that slowly the outdoor temperature is going to increase. Um, for, for demonstration purposes, we set the time on the Raspberry Pi to update at a rate of 3 seconds. Um, our normal update rate would only be 10 minutes. Therefore, this is, again, this is just for demonstration, but for right now, everything's updating at a rate of 3 seconds, just to make it seem faster. You can see here that it jumped by a degree, so now it's 69.8 degrees. Um, it's going to take some time to get calibrated, but it will slowly get up to the point that it needs to. And then, as well, if we take him, you can see it's at 71.6. If we take the temperature sensor out and insert it into here, our cold system, our cold area, it will also decrease probably around 60 to 55 degrees, but it's going to go slowly because of the filters that this uh, sensor outputs and this is the filters that are implemented within our system.
it's, th those are built in to protect against things like instant shock. So if you had, if all of a sudden you're reading 70 to 75, and then it's like, oh, hey, here's a value of 20 degrees, it's probably going to throw that out. And the, the APIs that we use to read from the sensor take all these into account. And so you can see here that our outdoor temperature is slowly going down now that our sensor is in contact with the ice. And that will conclude the demonstration of our project. And I will begin next with an overview of requirements and where each thing or where each of these components trace to which requirement.